Yo, Jay Blank here. You just unboxed your new Pico Calc. It's a powerful piece of hardware, but to follow along with this series and unlock its full potential with the most popular language for makers, we're going to install a new brain, MicroPython. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. We'll replace the factory software with MicroPython, turning this device into a powerful programmable tool ready for your own Python projects. Don't worry, it's a simple step-by-step -step process with no complex software involved. Let's get right to it. Before we start, let's talk about the two things you absolutely need on your desk. First, obviously your Pico Calc. The second is a micro USB cable. You must use a micro USB data cable, not just a charging cable. A lot of cheap cables that come with power banks or other random gadgets can only supply power. They can't transfer data. If your cable can't handle data, your computer will never even see the Pico Calc. And the rest of this tutorial just won't work. If you have any doubt, grab a cable you know came with a smartphone or another device that syncs with a computer. A good data cable is your golden ticket. To get that MicroPython brain onto our PicoCalc, we first need to put it into a special state called bootloader mode. This mode basically tells the PicoCalc, hey, stop whatever you're doing and get ready to receive new instructions. Let's walk through it together. First, and this is important, make sure your PicoCalc is completely unplugged and off. We need to start from a totally powered off state. Next, flip your Pico Calc to the back. Look inside the back vents of your Pico Calc. We're looking for a small white button on the Pico device itself. I put a link to this custom case in the description that makes this process extremely easy. Now for the ritual itself. Press and hold the boot select button while connecting your USB cable to the Pico device, not the Pico calc. So what did we just do? By holding that button during power up, you told the Pico Calc to show up to the computer as a simple USB storage drive. If you take a look at your file explorer, you should see a new device pop up. If you're on the Pico or Pico W, it'll say RPI-RP2, but if you're on the Pico 2 or the Pico 2W, it'll say RP2350. If you see that drive, congrats, you've successfully entered bootloader mode. The door is officially open. If for some reason you don't see the drive, don't panic. The most likely culprit is the micro USB cable. If you're sure the cable is good, just unplug the device and try the press and hold plug-in sequence one more time. But this time, hold the boot button until you see the device appear on your computer. With our Pico Calc waiting patiently in bootloader mode, it's time to give it its brain. This brain is a single file, the MicroPython firmware. Specifically, we need a version built to work with the Pico Calc's hardware. Your next mission is to download the correct firmware file from the official GitHub repository, which I've linked for you in the description. Now, this is a crucial step. There are different firmware files depending on whether your Pico Calc has a standard Pico or a Pico W or a Pico 2 or Pico 2 W. If we scroll down, the author listed the appropriate files. Now, in my case, the standard Pico version did not work. I had to instead use my Pico 2W and use the Pico 2W file. If we scroll back up, the files you want are with the file system. So for the Pico 2W, it's this one. 
Now, this next part is where you get to see the sheer elegance of the Raspberry Pi Pico. It is just beautifully simple. Remember that RPI-RP2 drive that appeared on your computer? Find the UF2 file you just downloaded. Then, then click and drag it onto the drive. The PicoCalc automatically ejects itself and reboots once the file has transferred over. And just like that, we have MicroPython on our PicoCalc. The first thing you should see on the screen is the Python repo prompt. The blinking cursor next to the three arrows is your hello world moment. This confirms that the hardware is working and the new firmware has been installed successfully. Take a second to appreciate this. You started with a device that did one thing and with a single file transfer, you installed a powerful interactive brain that's ready for your commands. You have officially turned this thing from a fixed function device into a flexible programmable tool. Now you're probably thinking, what's next? The author has included some incredible features directly into the firmware. There's an internal code editor that allows you to edit files directly on the PicoCalc. Not only that, you can run code and examples directly from your device. Let's take a look at the rotation example. If you hit Control D, it'll bring you back to the home screen. Well, if this video helped you get your PicoCalc up and running, do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. It lets me know I'm on the right track and really helps the channel reach more people just like you. If you ran into an issue, like something didn't work right, or if you just have a question, drop a comment down below. So. Let's just recap what you've done here. You started with a factory configured device. You learned the bootloader ritual. You flashed an entire operating system with a simple drag and drop. You took that piece of hardware and gave it a new powerful brain and saw the first signs of life with the Python prompt on its screen. You are no longer a beginner trying to figure things out. You are now a developer with a configured tool. You've laid down the foundation. The hardest part is officially over. Now the real fun begins. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jay Blinked. Peace.